हेलो एंड वेलकम बैक दिस इज योर होस्ट हर्षिश नाग कंटिन्यूंग फ्रॉम माय प्रीवियस एपिसोड ऑफ 2.2 पॉइंट टू ऑन मेजरिंग ग्रीन हाउस गैस एंड मिशन अंडर स्कोप वन एंड नाउ वी विल डिस्कस द सेम फॉर स्कोप टू स्कोप टू ग्रीन हाउस गैस एंड मिशन आर क्रूशल एज दे रिप्रेजेंट द डायरेक्ट एमिशन फ्रॉम द कंजन ऑफ परचेज इलेक्ट्रिसिटी स्टीम हीटिंग एंड कूलिंग बाय एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन although these emissions do not occur directly within the organization facilities they are significant part of its carbon footprint because they result from the generation of the energy it consumes understanding and managing scope 2 emission is essential for companies committed to reducing their environmental impact and contributing to global climate change mitigation efforts by addressing scope 2 emission organization can influence their supply chain particularly by choosing to purchase energy from low carbon or renewable sources this not only reduces their carbon footprint but also supports the transition to more sustainable energy system furthermore reporting the scope to emission is often a requirement for compliance with the environmental regulations and standards and it plays a key role in sustainability reporting framework like carbon disclosure project Reducing scope to emission is also aligned with the corporate social responsibility goal enhancing a company's reputation and meeting stakeholder expectation for environmental stewardship. Now let us explore in detail scope 2 of greenhouse gas emission. Now we shall discuss scope 2 emission from the purchased energy Scope 2 emissions are indirect greenhouse gas emission resulting from the consumption of the purchased energy such as electricity steam heating and cooling while these emission do not originate directly from an organization operation they are significant contributor to all overall carbon footprints managing and reducing scope 2 emission is crucial for organization aiming to achieve sustainability goal and minimizing their environmental impact The first is electricity. Electricity is the prime source of a scope 2 emission for most organization. These emission occurs at the power plant where electricity is generated often from fossil fuels such as coal, natural gas or oil. The carbon intensity of electricity depends on the energy mix used by the utility providers. For example, electricity generated from coal has a higher carbon footprint compared to all the produced from the renewable source like wind or solar according to the international energy agency electricity generation accounts for nearly 40% of the global co2 emission making it as a critical area for organization to address when managing their scope 2 emission companies can reduce these emission by purchasing electricity from renewable source investing in energy efficiency measures or participating in green power program lastly the greenhouse gas protocol state for many companies purchased electricity represents one of the largest sources of greenhouse gas emission and the most significant opportunity to reduce these emission the second is related with the steam steam is used in the various industrial process heating and power generation When organization purchases steam the emission associated with its production are categorized as scope 2 steam is typically produced using fossil fuels contributing to greenhouse gas emission the carbon intensity of the purchased steam depends on the fuel used in its production and the efficiency of the steam generation process to reduce scope 2 emission from steam organization can explore options such as sourcing steam from suppliers that use low carbon or renewable energy sources improving the efficiency of steam use within their operation or generating steam on site using cleaner fuels the world resource institute recommends that companies track and manage steam related emission as a part of their overall greenhouse gas inventory we can see an example that us Environmental Protection Agency that is EPA notes steam can be significant source of indirect emission 
particularly in energy intensive industries next is related to heating purchase heating often in the form of hot water or direct heating services is another source of scope emission this emission arises from the energy used to produce and distribute heat typically through the burning of fossil fuels organization can reduce heating related scope to emission by improving building insulation upgrading to more efficient heating system and using heat generated from renewable energy sources for example district heating system that utilizes waste heat from the industrial processes or biomass can significantly lower the carbon footprint associated with heating the us environmental protection agency suggests that companies explore such alternative to reduce their scope to heating emission the international energy agency that is iea highlights districts heating system can provide an efficient and flexible option to decarbonize the heating sector the next is related to cooling the cooling especially in the form of chilled water or air conditioning also contribute to scope to emission the production of cooling energy typically involves electricity consumption which depending on the energy source can have high carbon footprint to reduce these emissions organization can invest in energy efficient cooling technology optimize cooling process and consider alternative cooling method such as evaporative cooling or thermal energy storage the use of renewable energy to power cooling system can further mitigate scope to emission the american council for energy efficient economy emphasizes the importance of energy efficient cooling system in reducing overall energy consumption and associated emission the united nation environment program states district cooling can significantly reduce energy consumption and associated emission compared to individual cooling system addressing scope 2 emission is essential for organization committed to sustainability by understanding the source of these emission electricity steam heating and cooling companies can implement strategies to reduce their carbon footprint and contribute to global efforts to combat climate change now we shall discuss the steps involved in measuring the scope to emission accurate measurement is vital for developing effective mitigation strategies reporting to the stakeholders and compiling with the regulatory requirements the first step is related to collect energy data the first step in measuring scope to measure emission is to collect accurate and comprehensive data on energy consumption organization need to gather information on the quantity of the electricity steam heating and cooling purchased from the external providers this data is typically obtained from utility bills energy meters and other monitoring system its importance to ensure that the data covered all relevant facilities and operations within the organization boundaries according to the greenhouse gas protocol maintaining consistent and accurate record of energy consumption is fundamental for calculating scope 2 emission effectively the greenhouse gas protocol emphasizes that the company should collect activity data on energy consumed preferably in kilowatts for electricity and in appropriate unit for steam heat heating and cooling the second step is related to determining the emission factor once energy consumption data is collected the next step is to determine the appropriate emission factor emission factor represent the amount of greenhouse gas emission associated with each unit of energy consumed and vary based on the energy source and geographical location for example the emission factor for electricity depends on the energy mix of the local grid which may include varying proportion of fossil fuels nuclear and renewables the united states environmental protection agency and other organization provide standardized emission factors that can be used to calculate emission 
from different energy sources. Organization may also use location-based or market-based method to account for specific emissions associated with the electricity they consume. The United States Environmental Protection Agency states that emission factors are representative value that, that attempts to relate the quantity of the pollutant released to the atmosphere with an activity associated with the release of that pollutant. The next step is related to calculate emission. After determining the emission factor, organization can calculate their scope to emission by multiplying the energy consumed by the corresponding emission factor. This calculation should be done for each type of energy purchase, electricity, steam, heating and cooling to obtain a comprehensive measure of scope to emission. The results are typically expressed in metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent a standard unit for comparing emission across different greenhouse gas emissions. The greenhouse gas protocols outline the methodologies for calculating scope to emission and emphasize the importance of the transparency in reporting these figures. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, that is IPCC, notes that this approach is widely used and can provide reliable estimate when combined with the appropriate emission factors. The next step is related to consider green energy. To further refine the scope to emission, calculation and potentially reduce their reported emission organization should consider the impact of green energy purchase. The green energy refers to electricity generated from renewable sources such as wind, solar or hydro which have lower or zero greenhouse gas emission compared to conventional fossil fuels based electricity. When organization purchases renewable energy certificates that is RECs or engage in power purchase agreement that is PPA for green energy they can account for these purchase in their scope 2 emission calculation using the market based method. According to the International Renewable Energy Agency, integrating green energy into an organization energy mix is a key strategy for reducing scope 2 emission and supporting the transition to a low carbon economy. The Carbon Disclosure Project advice companies should report on any contractual instrument used and ensure they meet quality criteria for scope to accounting. The next is related to now reporting. After measuring scope to emission, organization must report their findings transparently and consistently. Reporting involves documenting energy consumption, the emission factors used and the total greenhouse gas emission calculated. This information is typically included in sustainability report corporate social responsibility report or greenhouse gas inventories submitted to regulatory bodies. The greenhouse gas protocol provides guidelines for scope to reporting, recommending the use of both location-based and the market-based method. Transparent reporting helps stakeholders understand an organization carbon footprint and supports accountability in meeting climate-related goals. The Greenhouse Gas Protocol recommends dual reporting. Companies shall accounts for and report scope to emission using both location-based and market-based method where quality data is available for both. The next step is now related to verifications. Verification ensures the accuracy and reliability of the scope to emission data. The third-party verification involves independent auditors reviewing the data collection method, emission factors, and calculation to confirm their validity. Verification is often required by regulatory bodies or investors and enhances the credibility of an organization emissions reporting. According to the World Resource Institute, verified data provides stakeholders with the confidence that reported emissions are accurate and that the organization is committed to robust environmental management. The International Organization 
for standardization ISO provides guidelines that verification can provide stakeholder with the increased confidence in the reported information. Now the next is related to continuous improvement. The continuous improvement is a critical aspect of managing scope 2 and it is the last step for measuring the scope 2 emission. Organizations should regularly review their energy use, explore opportunities to improve efficiency and adopt greener energy sources. This ongoing process involves updating energy procurement strategies, investing in energy efficiency projects and potentially increasing the share of renewable energy in the energy mix. By continuously improving their approach to measuring and reducing scope 2 emission, organizations can not only meet regulatory requirements but also contribute to broader sustainability goals such as reducing global carbon emission and combating climate change. The science-based target initiative that is FBTI emphasizes more or more that the companies should regularly assess and update their scope to emission calculation to ensure accuracy and identify reduction opportunities. In summary, measuring scope 2 emission involves collecting accurate energy consumption data, determining the appropriate emission factors, calculating emissions and considering the role of green energy purchase. These steps enable organizations to assess their indirect greenhouse gas emission and take action to reduce their carbon footprints. Now let us explore location-based methodology to explore scope 2 emission. The first location-based methods is one of the two approaches recommended by the Greenhouse Gas Protocol for calculating and reporting scope 2 emission. Scope 2 emission are indirect greenhouse gas emission from the consumption of the purchased electricity, heat, steam or cooling. These emissions occur at the power plant where electricity is generated rather than at a point of consumption but are still attributable to the end user. Understanding the location based method, the location based method is commonly used in corporate greenhouse gas inventory as it provides a baseline understanding of emission based on the local energy context. It is especially used for organizations operating in regions where the grid emission factors are relatively stable or where the renewable energy options are limited. Next part is associated with the calculation. The location-based method estimates scope to emission by using average emission factors associated with the electricity grid in the region where the energy consumption occurs. This approach reflects the average carbon intensity of the grid mix which typically include a combination of the fossil fuels such as coal, natural gas and oil, nuclear energy and renewable energy source like wind, solar and hydropower. The formula used in the location based method is generally based on the electricity consumption in kilowatt multiplied by grid emission factor in tons of CO2 emission per kilowatt hour. The next is related to the advantage of location based method. The first advantage is related to simplicity and consistency. The location based method is straightforward to implement because it relies on the readily available data such as electricity bill and published grid emission factor. This made it accessible for organizations of all sides from small businesses to large multinational operations. It provides a consistent approach that reflects the average impact of electricity consumption in specific location making it easier to compare emission across different regions or facilities within an organization. The second part is related to reflects regional energy profiles. This method accurately reflects the carbon intensity of the regional electricity grid which can vary significantly between locations. For example, region having 
heavily reliant on coal will have higher grid emission factor leading to higher scope 2 emission while region with a significant share of renewable will have lower emission. It can also highlight the importance of regional energy policies and grid decarbonization efforts in reducing an organization carbon footprint. Now let us see what are the challenges and limitations. The first challenges and limitation is related to lack of recognition of renewable energy purchase. The location based method does not account for the organization's efforts to purchase renewable energy or engage in green energy procurement strategy. If a company buy renewable energy certificate that is RECs or enter power purchase agreement that is PPAs for renewable energy, these actions will not influence the emission calculated using this method. As a result, it may not fully reflect an organization commitment to sustainability. The other is related to dependency on the accurate emission factor. The accuracy of the location based method rely heavily on availability and precision of regional grid emission factors. These factors can change over time as the energy mix evolves requiring organization to stay updated with the latest data to ensure accurate reporting. In summary, the location based method under scope 2 greenhouse gas emission is a practical and widely accepted approach that reflects the average carbon intensity of the electricity grid in a given region. While it offers simplicity and consistency, it may not fully capture the impact of renewable energy procurement, making it essential for organizations to consider both this method and alternative market-based method to get a comprehensive view for their scope to emission. Now let us discuss market-based methodology for measuring emission under scope 2. The market-based method is one of the two primary approaches recommended by the Greenhouse Gas Protocol for calculating and reporting scope 2 emission. Scope 2 emission refers to indirect greenhouse gas emission from the consumption of the purchased electricity, heat, steam or cooling. Unlike the location-based method, which uses average grid emission factor, the market-based method considers the specific emission associated with the electricity that an organization has chosen to purchase. The market-based method is particularly useful for, com for companies that actively engage in sustainable energy procurement and seek to influence their emission profile through their purchasing decision. When reporting scope to emission, the greenhouse gas protocol recommends that organization report both the market-based and location-based emission to provide a comprehensive view of their impact. The next is related to their calculation. The market-based method calculates scope 2 emission based on the emission intensity of the electricity that an organization has procured through a specific contract or instruments. These instruments can include renewable energy certificate, guarantees of origin, or power purchase agreement or contract with the specific energy suppliers. The fundamental idea is that organizations have some degree of control over their energy supply and can therefore influence the greenhouse gas emission associated with their electricity consumption by choosing lower emission or renewable energy sources. The formula used in the market-based method is generally based electricity consumption multiplied by supplier specific emission factor that is carbon oxide that is CO2 in tons emitted per kilowatt. The next is related what are the advantage of market based method. The first advantage is related to reflect specific purchasing decision. The market based method allows organization to reflect their specific purchasing decision in their greenhouse gas inventories. This means that if a company invests in a renewable energy through REC or PPAs or green tariff, 
their scope to emission can reflect the lower emission associated with those purchases this approach incentivizes companies to actively reduce their carbon footprint by choosing greener energy sources as these decisions are directly reflected in their greenhouse gas reporting the second is encourages market development for renewable energy by allowing companies to account for their renewable energy purchase the market based method supports the development of renewable energy market as more companies demand renewable energy this can drive investment in renewable infrastructure further reducing overall emission in the energy sector the next advantage is related to alignment with the sustainability goal for organization committed to sustainability and climate action the market based method provides a way to align greenhouse gas reporting with their broader environmental goal it enables them to showcase their efforts in procuring cleaner energy and reducing their resilience of fossil fuels now let us discuss about the challenges and limitations the first challenge is related to the complexity of the data availability the market based method can be more complex to implement than the location based method as it requires specific data on the emission factors of energy products purchased not all energy suppliers may provide this data or it may not be available for all regions the method also requires organizations to keep detailed record of their energy purchased and contract which can add administrative burdens the second is related to risk of double counting there is a potential risk of double counting emission reduction if multiply parties claim the same renewable energy attributes particularly with instruments like rec's to mitigate this the greenhouse gas protocol provides a guidance on ensuring that claims are exclusively and accurately reported the third is related to limited applicability in some region in region where renewable energy market are not well developed or where the energy procurement options are limited the market based method may be less applicable or result in less accurate reflection of uh, organization actual emission in conclusion the market based method under section 2 of greenhouse gas emission offers a flexible and forward looking approach that enables organization to reflect their specific energy procurement strategy in their greenhouse gas reporting while it presents some challenges particularly in terms of data availability and complexity it plays a crucial role in driving the transition towards a lower carbon economy by encouraging the use of renewable energy now let us discuss what will happen if we use both methods that is location and market based the scope to emission represents the indirect greenhouse gas emission from the consumption of purchased electricity heat steam or cooling under the greenhouse gas protocol two primary methods are recommended for calculating the reporting these emission the location based and the market based both method provide a distinct but a complementary insight into a organization energy related emission making it important to consider them together for comprehensive understanding of an organization environmental impact to ensure comprehensive reporting organizations are generally encouraged to report their scope to emission using both location based and the market based method the differences in the result can highlight the impact of an organization energy purchasing decision and the potential benefits of sourcing electricity from lower emission or renewable sources let us see what are the key considerations of using both methods the first is related to data accuracy accurate data on electricity consumption is a critical for calculating scope to emission this data is often obtained from utility bills 
metering system or energy management systems. The next is related to emission factors. The choice of emission factor is crucial for the location based method. National or regional grid emission factors are typically used while for the market based method emission factors can vary based on the specific contract of or certificates. Renewable energy purchasing. If a company purchases renewable energy certificate that is REC or a similar instrument, these should be considered in the market method to potentially reduce the reported scope to emission. Let us see the importance of both the methods. Both methods are essential for comprehensive understanding of an organization scope to emission. The location based method offers insights into the broader environmental impact based on the regional energy mix while the market based method emphasizes the impact of a specific procurement choice. Together these methods enable organizations to report their emission transparently, track progresses in reducing carbon footprints and make informed decisions about the future energy strategy. Now let us look what are the key benefits by using both methods. This includes improved accuracy. Combining both methods can provide a more accurate assessment of scope 2 emission as they complement each other strength and weakness. Another is related to enhanced transparency. Using both methods can improve transparency and accountability in reporting scope to emission. Another is related to the target emission reduction. By understanding the emission associated with a specific energy source, organization can develop target strategies to reduce their scope to footprints. Now let us see what is important to note that the choice of method may depend on various factors including the first is data availability. The data availability on the emission intensity of a specific electricity source may influence the choice of method. Other is organization goal. An organization specific goal and priorities may determine which method is most appropriate. And the last one is regulatory requirement. Some jurisdiction may have a specific requirement for calculating scope to emission, which may influence the choice of method. By using both the location based and the market based method, organization can make informed decision about their energy procurement and emission reduction strategies. Now let us discuss an example for scope 2 emission in IT sector. In this example, we consider an IT service company that consume both grid electricity and renewable energy. The table shows annual energy consumption, the emission factor of each energy source and the total emission calculated. The grid electricity consumed by the company results in a significant emission due to the high emission factor associated with the energy mix of the grid. This factor reflects the carbon intensity of the electricity generated, which in this case is around 0.82 tons CO2 emission per megawatt of hectare consumed. The total emission from the grid electricity amount to 41,000 tons of CO2 emission annually. The company also consumed 10,000 megawatt for renewable energy which has an emission factor of 0 tons of carbon dioxide per megawatt. This indicates that the energy source from the renewable contributes no direct emission resulting in total of 0 ton of CO2 emission from this energy source. This example highlights how different energy source contribute to the overall scope 2 emission of a company. By increasing the proportion of renewable energy in its energy mix, the company can significantly reduce its scope 2 emission, supporting its sustainability goal. The example also emphasizes the importance of selecting low carbon energy source in reducing a company carbon footprint.
At the end, let us now discuss the strategy for reducing scope 2 emission. A scope 2 emission we stem from the indirect emission associated with the purchased electricity, heating and cooling is a critical for organization aiming to lower their carbon footprint. Several strategies can be implemented to achieve this reduction and we are going to discuss some of these. The first is related to the renewable energy procurement. Procure renewable energy is one of the most effective way to reduce scope 2 emission. Organization can invest in power purchase agreement that is PPA or purchase renewable energy certificate that is RECs to ensure that their electricity consumption is sourced from renewable energy. This shift not only reduces the carbon intensity of their energy use but also supports a broader transition to a low carbon energy grid. The next is related to energy efficiency measures. Improving energy efficiency is another crucial strategy. By optimizing energy usage through the implementation of energy efficient technology such as LED lightning, high efficiency, high efficiency system and energy management system, organization can reduce the amount of energy they need to purchase. This in turn directly lowers scope to emission. Regular energy audit and the adoption of energy saving practice further enhance the efficiency resulting in both environmental and the cost benefit. The next example is green building design. Incorporating green building principle in design and construction of facilities can significantly reduce energy consumption and consequently scope to emission. Green building uses passive design elements such as natural ventilation or day lightning and integrate energy efficient system to minimize energy usage. Certification standards like LEED leadership in energy and environmental design provide the framework for designing buildings that are both energy efficient and environmentally sustainable. By focusing on these strategy, organization can effectively reduce their scope to emission contributing to their overall sustainability goal while promoting the use of cleaner energy and more efficient practice. Well, this is the end of my presentation. In conclusion, today in the presentation, we have covered the source, management and strategies for reducing scope to emission along with the example for each. By accurately calculating scope to emission using these methods, organization can better understand their indirect energy related emission and make informed decision to reduce their overall carbon footprint. As we continue our journey, it is clear that we need to explore scope 3 emission next. So stay tuned for our upcoming discussion on measuring and managing scope 3 greenhouse gas emission. Until then, goodbye.